This prayer is based on Psalm 104. Praise the Lord, O my soul. O God, you are very great. You are arrayed in glory and majesty. You clothe yourself in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a curtain. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creation. Amen. Listen. You hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves suck back and fling at their return up the high strand. Begin and cease and then again begin with tremulous cadence slow and bring the eternal note of sadness in. Those are lines 9 to 14 of Dover Beach by Matthew Arnold, one of the great poems of the 19th century. For me, thinking about sacred spaces, which is the subject of this series of chapel talks, it isn't Dover Beach that's my sacred space, but Brighton Beach. And it isn't the eternal note of sadness that is brought in, but the eternal note of joy. For us, Brighton is home. We are very fortunate from our top floor flat, we have an aerial view to our right, looking west, we can see Worthing, and on a clear day, we can even see the Isle of Wight. To our left, looking east beyond the marina, we can see the Seven Sisters, which is a group of chalky cliffs which go towards Beachy Head and Eastbourne. I love watching the light move across the sea as the day progresses and the sun sparkles and spreads. I love the constantly changing appearance of the sea, driven by light and wind and currents. Maybe there are boats. On Sunday, there's usually a regatta. Seagulls land on the balcony railings. There might be a marathon or a car rally on the seafront underneath. When the moon is full, it unfurls a ribbon of silver light over the water towards me. On winter days, the waves crash in sizzling spray and only the dog walkers can be seen. On some days when the light is cool and limpid, I can't tell where the horizon is, where the sea ends and the sky begins. Tennyson's Ulysses wanted to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. Training the eye on the fine line of the horizon is indeed a preparation for eternity. The sea is traditionally a metaphor for eternal life, for whatever may lie beyond the life here on earth. It is important in the Bible when God created the world, his spirit moved over the waters. He drowned much of the world in the great flood in which Noah and the occupants of his ark were the only survivors. The prophet Jonah called out from the belly of the great fish, from the deep ocean of his despair, praying for God's mercy. The sea, like life itself, carries our souls to we know not where. But my sacred space is not just up there on the balcony of our top floor flat. It's also down at ground level, at pebble level to be precise. I love swimming in the sea. To be borne up and then almost forced under by the waves. To push my way through the current with a force that reassures me I'm, I'm in control of my life. Then I lie on the beach, wriggling into a comfortable space in the cool, below-surface pebbles. I dry off in the sun, reading my book, then sling my towel round myself and walk the short distance to our flat and straight into a shower. Perhaps it feels sacred, simply because it makes me feel so free. As someone Jewish, I find the idea of a sacred space being somewhere remote, unworldly and silent very hard to take on board. 
One of the reasons Brighton Beach is sacred for me is that I share it with other people. Children dig holes for the sea to rush into. Dogs try to steal people's picnics. There's someone meditating or doing Tai Chi. That couple's windbreak has fallen over. Two women in heavy saris rush into the sea, screaming and laughing, then wade back to land, their long clothes completely drenched. I love the idea that this place, so close to where I live, is enjoyed by so many other people. The sacred um, connects us to the lives of others and to the things they love. For God and for the person who tries to follow a spiritual path, the sacred and the holy lie as much in the here and now, in the noisy present, as in the still, silent horizon, far away on the edge of the seascape. Later in Dover Beach, Arnold describes the melancholy, long, withdrawing roar, portraying life as a darkling plain. But my sacred space, what Shakespeare in King Lear, also actually describing Dover Beach, called the murmuring surge that on the unnumbered idle pebbles chafes, is a place that promises peace, joy, the energy of a slowly beating heart as the waves come in and go out again come in and go out again. And of course, they promise eternity.